In this video, I wanted to make uh, clear something that I'm not sure is absolutely clear in some of my other videos. Now this is a two-stage 90% furnace. It has two pressure switches, but what we're going to concentrate on now is this here, which is a combustion chamber. Now it's covered, so it actually draws outside air for combustion. There is a pipe here, these two little hoses, both of these are coming from one side of each of these pressure switches. Now you can't see it too well, but on the back side there is also pressure sensing tubing going to the secondary heat exchanger. But what this is for here is to determine whether we have proper amount of vacuum, that is probably a low vacuum, not very much vacuum, in the combustion chamber. Because it's referenced right here. It goes right up here and goes into the combustion chamber. So it's sensing the pressure in the combustion chamber. It also has a T here that goes off to the gas valve. What that uh, pipe going to the gas valve is for is to put the gas valve in the same pressure area as the combustion chamber. Gas valves have regulators in them, and the regulator actually has to be in the same pressure area as the outlet of gas. Like here's your outlet of gas going here, goes into the combustion chamber, and so that regulator in here has to see the same pressure as we see inside the combustion chamber. So we put this pipe in there that references here, makes the gas valve in the same pressure area, and if there's a problem with vacuum, understand these vacuum switches are being pulled on one side with a hose behind it, and I know you can't see it, but it's going back to the to the secondary heat exchanger where the inducer here is drawing vacuum. So it's pulling a vacuum there. However, if the vacuum in the combustion chamber, see this is actuating on the opposite side of the pressure switch, so each side is pulling a vacuum. If the vacuum gets too high on this side, that means the vacuum too high in the combustion chamber, it doesn't want it to fire. It means there's some kind of blockage in the uh, combustion air piping, you know, a screen on the outside, uh, some little animal tried to make a nest in there, you know, something like that. Uh, or the vent is too long, the vent may have sagged, got water in it, something like that. There's all kinds of things can happen. So in order to test whether that's a problem, now, if you've seen any of my uh, pressure videos, and I will reference my other pressure videos at the end of this uh, video, I've told you that a pressure switch problem that's uh, encountered on one of these furnaces is oftentimes not the pressure switch. It's not a failure of the pressure switch. The pressure switch is telling you something's wrong. I look at the window. There's a window in the bottom of this thing. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've got a bunch of them on the, uh, looking for the codes, the error codes. If any of that has, has come about where it says there's a pressure switch problem, then we need to find out what's telling the pressure switch not to make before we decide the pressure switch is bad. So if my inducer starts, I come in here and pop this off and it starts going through a normal cycle, that means I've got a problem here. Don't leave that thing off, by the way. If you leave it off, you're taking away one of the safeties on this, uh, on this furnace. So don't do that. It's telling you there's a problem. Uh, these are fairly common problems to have. Uh, you can begin by, you know, looking at the vent, trying to pull it off, look through it, see if there's anything in the vent, things like that and look for any sags that may be in the vent, first of all. But when 
when you have a pressure switch problem and you pull this off and it does start working normally, that's when you've got to start looking there. Now occasionally they won't work simply because there's water in the inducer that won't produce enough vacuum on the opposite side. And when you pull this off it works simply because there's not enough vacuum on the opposite side and whatever vacuum is here overcomes it, if you can understand that. Again, I'll be referencing my other uh, pressure switch videos in this. Uh, water in the inducer, sags in the uh, vent line, something like that, screens that are plugged, all sorts of things like that could, could happen. You could have a condensate drain that's plugged. That'll cause it sometimes. You can usually hear it in the inducer. The inducer will start making kind of a watery noise like it's throwing water around. But that's one of the things when you're troubleshooting these things that you need to do to try to figure out where these pressure switch problems are coming up. Hope this one's understandable and that's it on the combustion air sensing tube for the pressure switch.